Hey, welcome back to Laser Engraving 911. So on this episode, we're gonna do something a little different than we normally do. We're gonna get into the ins and outs of high-powered laser cleaning. Trust me, you're gonna wanna stick around for this one. So if that sounds like something you wanna get into, then buckle up real tight, get your pen and paper out, and let's get into it on Laser Engraving 911. All right, folks, so I know this is a little bit different than what we normally do, but I found that there's not a lot of real sit down videos about high powered laser cleaners. So uh, I figured I'd make one. SFX Laser was nice enough to send me their BLC 2000 laser cleaner. That's 2000 for 2000 watts of fiber laser power. This is a pretty powerful laser uh, and its main purpose is for cleaning rust off of metal, paint, grease, other debris off of metal. But what I wanted to do uh, before we get into showing you a demo on how this machine works and what I can do with it and kind of the ins and outs, I wanna talk about safety. This machine is an extremely powerful fiber laser. So if you can imagine this many 50 watt fiber lasers packed into one machine and take away the fact that it's not pulsed, it's a continuous wave, that's what's rocking inside this machine. But before we get into more of the nitty gritty, let's go ahead and talk about safety. Respirator, gloves, safety glasses, super important. And then the last thing is you saw that I was wearing a jumpsuit and that was because actually I was outside laser cleaning stuff. I came inside later and my wife was like, what's that smell? What are you talking about? I don't smell anything. You know, I went and smelled my clothes later and you could actually smell some of the fumes we're getting on my clothes and stuff. So I chose to get a, a, a pair of coveralls. I would recommend that those are the things to wear when you're doing high powered laser cleaning. All right, so let's get down to business. So before I put all my safety equipment on, uh, let's talk about what we're actually going to laser clean first. So I've got this really cool sign that I made a long time ago. So it's really, really rusted and I purposely rusted it going. It's just been rusting in my garage. It's my Fallout 4 sign, which is an awesome game, by the way. And I figured we would go ahead and clean all that off and uh, see if we can get it ready to be rusted again. <laughs> so <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and get the laser set up, and we'll talk about the settings a little bit later and what those are and see if we can uh, clean this piece of rusty metal up. So the preparation to get started before I put my safety equipment on is I've got my fume extractor right here by Pure Air Fume Extractors, and I'll list a link in the description below. You guys have heard me talk about this unit before. Got the hose running down, and I'll be doing my best to capture the fumes that are coming off of this. I'll also be wearing my safety glasses, my gloves, you know, it's kind of windy today, so I'm expecting that the fume extractor is not going to collect everything, and that's all the more reason to wear the PAPR. So, but let's just see how it goes, and we'll get into it. All right, so I've got the beam width at about 80 millimeters wide and i've got a set speed that i'm going to be that the galvo mirror is going to be going back and forth based on the chart that they provided me and one really important thing to remember is that you want to be mindful of where your fiber optic cable is which also has the cooling lines that go into the head because there's actually active cooling that goes into the galvo head and back out to the giant chiller that's in the machine to keep the laser head cool. 
So you want, while you're working, you want to make sure that you're not going to step on your cord and crush the fiber optic cable. Keep that in mind. It's got a safety feature built in where you've got to, if you just tap once, nothing happens. But if you tap twice, you can see that. So I always do a little test first. Make sure the beams, the shape and the distance that I want. And then we go ahead and get into it. Here we go. Now you notice one of the things that I'm doing is I'm constantly moving the laser cleaning head. That's really important because if you just keep it in one spot, uh, you're going to start annealing and warping the metal depending on how thick it is. So you want to always be moving the laser head. It's kind of like painting. You don't want to just stay in one spot for too long because then you get drips. I'm gonna put my gloves on because I'm gonna touch, rotate it so the area I'm working on is closer to the fume extractor. Now there's a common misconception with fiber lasers that uh, they only work on metal or things that absorb light and that you know nothing happens if you wave it by wood and it doesn't hurt the wood well that's true but it's mostly untrue with a with a laser like this if i hold this laser in one spot on this piece of wood right here and don't move it watch what happens it definitely will affect wood and all other organic material depending on the power and how long you leave it on there. You see what I did there is there's an optimal focal distance for this particular laser cleaner. And you can easily find out where it is just like with a fiber laser engraver you can shoot it from far away and you'll see not, and as soon as you're in focus, which is about right there, you'll see that that's the optimal distance you wanna be. So you wanna constantly try to keep that distance. Let's see what we got. Pretty awesome. I would say all the rest is removed off of that. I could still go even further if I wanted to, but I think that was a pretty good demonstration. All right, so here's a piece of like trailer or some something from a piece of equipment that's been powder coated. I'll show you right here. Just this piece of dirty scrap. I'll just keep it at 100% power. Just because what? This is YouTube and that's what you guys want to see, right? Oh, see? There's a safety feature built in that if you don't use the laser, I believe for it's about a minute, it automatically locks itself out, which is great in case somebody walks by and they're like, oh, look at that. Let me see what that is. So I'm going to go unlock it. Wow, that was really fast. I don't know if you can see that or not. That was just that one section I did. It took like a couple of seconds to get that shine on there. And that's some really, really thick powder coating as well. Oh, that side's done. <laughs> wow. That is crazy how quick that 
clean that off. Here's what the other side looked like, remember? So next we're gonna do an experiment. What I'm gonna demonstrate to you is how the fiber laser wavelength reacts differently to different colors. So I've got white up here, I've got some blue, some red, dark brown, some purple, and black. If you have a fiber laser and you're already engraving with one, you know that depending on the color, the light is absorbed by the wavelength of light better. So the lighter the color of the object, the more light displacement or diffusion happens with fiber laser technology. And that's true for laser cleaners as well. This is just spray paint on wood. Let's go ahead and take this and I've dropped the power down to 20% on the laser cleaner. And we're just gonna run right down and see which gets removed quicker based on what I just told you for science. All right, so here we go. Try to get right on. I got my close camera so you can see whites up top, darker colors down below. Start from the bottom and go up. Can you see that? Going over the white, over and over and over again. Even the blue is having a problem. But as soon as I get into the darker colors, <laughs> so you can see here what I'm talking about. Now let's try to up the power and see if we can blast through that blue and white just by using pure brute force. Yeah, I've gone up to 70% power. So I'm getting through it, but I'm having to dwell in the area longer. So that's something to keep in mind. If you've got something with lighter colored paints on it, you're gonna have to up the power or use a low power and go over it for a really long time. What do we got here next? There's another piece of scrap that I picked up. I think this is aluminum and it's powder coated. Let's go ahead and see if we can remove some paint on that. And we'll just leave it at the 70% power that we were just using. Definitely aluminum, for sure, and definitely took that paint right off. So let's see how hot that is. Oh, we're like 180. It's hot. So you want to keep that in mind when you're laser cleaning metals is how thin is the metal? Is it going to get so hot that it starts changing the color of the metal? If that doesn't matter, then that's fine, but is it gonna start warping the metal? Those are just some things that you need to keep in mind with laser cleaning. And I found that also, if you notice, I widened the beam on that second part. If you keep the beam the size of the area that you wanna work with, it's it seems to do better, it's more concentrated. You have a really wide beam if you want to with this machine, but it's for doing big, you know, giant areas. Uh, it's always better to adjust your power a little bit lower and try to keep the beam relative to the object that you're working on, if that makes sense. So that little part that we did earlier, I, I kept the beam about like that, and that seemed to work really well. If I would have spread it out like that, it also spreads the energy out as well. So something to keep in mind. So here's a perfect example on this shovel. I had the beam as wide as it could possibly go, and it made sense for this application so I could get rid of a lot of rust quickly. All right, so now that we've had our fun outside, I figure I'd show you some of the startup procedures things you need to pay attention to, and some of the basic settings on how to set the parameters of the unit. A couple of things you want to know. The front opens up, and this is where the laser source is housed. It's a max laser source, and like I said, I think they have different options for laser sources. It does come with a key, and it has an emergency stop, so you have a separate key for the laser source itself. You can keep that handy and only bring it out when you need to turn it on. You do have to turn the laser source on. You have to turn it on here as well. Uh, I always just kind of keep it on so it's ready to go once I power up the main unit. This is the chiller. 
So the chiller is what keeps the laser head cool and everything else cool inside here. It's extremely important that you keep the water level. You fill this up as soon as you get it. You wanna fill it all the way to the top of the green. Right now I'm about halfway down, but I'm still in the normal threshold and you wanna use distilled water. You just unscrew this little cap here, pour your water in until you see the little bubble get up to top of the green and then cap it off and then always keep an eye on your, on your chiller water level. That's really important. This thing has to keep cool because it's so powerful and then if you ever need to drain your water you've got your drain right here inside here is where you're going to get the goggles that come with the unit you saw me using a different pair of goggles that was just a preference i had because it had the side shields and i got my goggles from noir uh, and i'll list a link below on where i got those but these are the ones that come with the unit and they are rated for this wavelength and they are optical density of six plus so, and they're rated for 1064 nanometers. And then the gloves will come in here uh, as well. They send you a pair of gloves. They send you some lens cleaning kits. And we're not gonna talk about how to clean the lenses and get into the laser head. That'll be on a separate video. And another thing that comes in there, not the actual lens itself, but some little protective lenses that are protect the actual lens before, and those can get swapped out. You're supposed to inspect the protective lens after every use to make sure that no dust or debris has gotten on that protective lens. And if it does, they give you like six or seven replacement ones. That's something to keep in mind is I was told by the manufacturer that you should always inspect the lens protector. It's like a little shield inside there uh, after every heavy use to make sure that no, nothing's been building up on there because that could definitely hurt your laser head. All right, so that's it. I mean, it's super basic inside. That's what's going on there. And now we'll move over to the control panel and the startup sequence. All right, so this is the control panel of the unit and you've got your emergency stop, your indicator that the power's on, and then you've got your master laser enable right here. You're gonna wanna plug in the unit. Uh, once again, this unit does not require three phase power supply. I don't have three phase power and I thought that lasers like this run off of three phase power and um, super cool, this one doesn't. But basically, it's the same kind of power that you would run a double electric oven on. So to start up the unit, you're going to want to undo the emergency stop, let the unit boot up, and then it's going to present you with these two options. Now, I'm not going to get too deep into the settings, the, the really nitty gritty settings. Um, and most of those settings, honestly, you're not going to want to mess with. So um, and if you are going to mess with them, I would definitely reach out to SFX Laser and make sure you know what you're doing before you mess with those settings. But the main settings that you're gonna be using are gonna be in the cleaning settings. So you're gonna hit cleaning and it's gonna ask you for an admin password, which you can set yourself. By default, it's just set to the number one. So you've got sway, air, laser, swing, power, and a big ready button in the middle. It's a very simple interface. Um, Let's go ahead and start with the swing settings. When you go to swing, it's asking you how wide do you want your beam in millimeters and how fast do you want the beam to travel back and forth? It's a one mirror galvo head. So there's not two mirrors, it's just one. Depending on your application, like we talked about before, you may want a, a small beam traveling really fast or kind of a medium speed, or you may want a really wide beam. And that's where you select the size here. In the book that comes with it, they give you a nice chart. They want you to stick with these width and speed settings so you don't blow out the galvo. So you've got 20, if you're gonna pick a 20 millimeter wide beam, they want you to use a scanning speed of 2,500 millimeters a second. If you're gonna go all the way to 160 millimeters, they want you to use a 20,000 millimeters per second. So it's all relative and it's all in the book, the width and the speeds that you should be doing. The power settings, so we go into power and that is where you would pick your power in percentage. Remember you have 2000 watts on the BLC 2000. You can pick your frequency. It only goes from uh, zero to 20 on the frequency. Uh, air delay, I don't mess with. Air off, I don't mess with. And the duty cycle, uh, I just leave at 100. And then when you're ready to laze, you need to make sure that the master laser enable button is on, which is right here. 
I'm going to turn that off now because we're not going to be laser or anything, but you need to have that button on and then you're going to hit sway and you're going to hit laser and it's going to give you a warning. Please confirm the surrounding environment. No flammable or explosive articles. Remove irrelevant personnel. Love that. And then you go back and you should be able to go over and use your laser cleaner. That's in the in the settings, uh, just a really brief overview of how to operate the settings and how to select your power, your beam width, and your speed. It's that simple. That about wraps it up for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I did making it. And if you got value out of it and some entertainment, make sure you smash that like button and leave a comment below. It helps tell YouTube that this video is awesome and should be shared all over the place for everyone to watch. One of the other things that we didn't really get into is the different kinds of laser cleaners. And there is actually another model that SFX Laser makes called the LC100. It's a 100 watt pulsed MOPA portable fiber laser for doing finer detailed laser cleaning work. So if that's something you think you need for your application and not the brute here, the BLC2000, you might wanna look into the LC100. I've listed links in the description below on where you can get those. Believe it or not, you can get them right on Amazon and the shipping was really, really fast. So last but not least, I just wanna thank all my subscribers and everybody that's active on the channel. Thank you so much, it means a lot to me. It makes me excited to make more videos. So until next time, I'll see you right back here on Laser Engraving 911.